Ephesians, in Ephesians 1, Paul is an apostle of Jesus Christ. That's how he starts it out. And he talks about um, um, it's by the will of God. And absolutely, God's the one that places us in the position that we're at. As you give your life to Jesus Christ, he's already got a plan for you. He's got a purpose. He has a plan. And it's our willingness to um, work that plan that God has given us. Pray for guidance. Pray for direction. So as you give your life to Jesus, you may be a pastor. You may be an evangelist. You may be um, in the worship team. You may be the janitor. You may be the um, person that visits hospitals. You may be the cook if you have a place that serves meals. I mean, you may be the person that just at your work, you're the one that brings hope into a business place. Uh, There's so many places that God can use us. And be willing to be used and know that God has chosen you for that place. So Paul is um, speaking to the Ephesians. It says in verse 3, it says, Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. Have you read the story of Genesis in Genesis? Have you read it? There was the creation of the world, the planets, everything. And then around day six, right? He creates us. Scripturally, (laughs) um, God had a a plan before the creation of the world, of the planets, of earth. He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we would be holy and blameless before him. God had a plan for you before you were ever existed. Before the creation of humanity, God already knew you. God knows all things. That throws people off so bad. Well, if God knew it, why did he let it happen? I hope we can explain it a little bit today that you go away going, wow, I kind of get it now. Because it is hard. It's hard to think of us as um, having the ideas and the knowledge of God when God is so much greater than us. He knows everything. We know little. We cannot tell what's going to happen in the future. God already knows. Before he ever created the world, he already knew about us. He already already knew. It says, um, in love, he predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself, according to the kind intention of his will, to the praise and glory of his grace, which he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. That's Jesus. It's through Jesus Christ that we're saved. God already knew. You know, you think about it. Was it a surprise to him whenever Adam and Eve sinned? Absolutely not. He totally knew uh, whenever he created humanity that they were going to disobey him and sin. Did he say, why create them? They're just going to disobey me. They're just going to walk away. Why, Why do it? Because there is a love that God had for creation. He had a love for us. That's why I did it. Because there are some of us in all of creation that are going to choose to worship him. There's a lot of people that's not going to choose to worship God. And he still loves them. But his rejoicing is the ones who worship him It's the ones who give their life to him so that he can bless them. It says, in him, this is verse 7, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished on us. In all wisdom and insight, he made known to us the mystery 
of his will, according to his kind intention, which he purposed in him, with a view to administration suitable to the fullness of the times. That is, the summing up of all things in Christ, things in heaven and things on earth in him. All of creation has a curse because of humanity. We turned what we owned because God gave it to us. We turned that over to Satan. We sold out. So the curse of death, death didn't even exist for us. The only ones that were going to face uh, eternal death was Satan, Lucifer, and the angels that followed him. A third of them. Through the jealousy of uh, the... We're, I'm not positive on the jealousy. There's a jealousy towards God, which um, to, through Jesus Christ, I, I get that with Satan being jealous of him. Um, and that's how the wording is. But I don't know if it's a jealousy towards Christ or the fact that he created humanity and Satan is actually jealous of us. Because Satan was Lucifer in heaven. Um, he was a highest ranking angel, angelic being, I should say. And through that, he sees man and they get their own universe. And they're the head of this universe. They get to rule the animals. They get to rule the planet. They get to take care of the planet. Um, the jealousy could be towards Humanity aimed at Christ. Whatever the jealousy was, Satan was so upset that he was able to lure a third of the angels. I just have a feeling that you know, on my own interpretation, I just say, hey, look, look at those guys. I mean, we're up here doing all the work and look at them. They get the whole planet. They haven't done anything. <laughs> you ever heard anything like that? <laughs> you go to work and somebody comes up and they move right to the top. Start getting a better paycheck, and then everybody goes, hey, who's that guy? It's that jealousy of seeing someone come in and take over. Well, you've been there so many years working, thinking, I, I should have been the one to get that. Well, Satan could have had that ex experience where he's in, hey, I, I'm the one that should be ruling a land. If anybody's going to rule it. So before the foundations of earth, um, foundations of any of the planet, uh, before that took place, God knew about you. God knew about me. He also knew that you would fail. But he loved you anyway. It says here that there's a predestined. Um, we are predestined. Um, people can go all kinds of directions on predestination. People will say that I can pray all day long, but if I'm not predestined by God, chosen by God, me personally, then I can pray all I want to and I won't get to go to heaven. That's not biblical. You can, you can find wording to make it sound correct for you. But I'll shoot it down with one scripture. Predestination cannot be true. Meaning that I don't get a choice. Otherwise, John 3.16 shouldn't exist. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes. Whosoever you didn't say just the predestined. <laughs> he said whosoever. So what does it mean by predestined then? Because obviously there is a, a, the word there. You got to think, well, if God already knew before the foundations of the earth, he knew that people were going to betray him. He knew that people were not going to worship him. He created us for that. He created us, and, and the joy that he receives is that we see who he is. As his creation, we worship him, and this is a relationship that we have. He is our God. He is our Father, but yet something else is even greater. Um, he creates us in the essence of being in a family of him, not just a creation. He adopts us as sons and daughters. This is huge. We're not just a tree out there growing and that's what we do. It, we're actually a creation that has a soul and we're going to spend eternity with him with an inheritance. What he owns is ours. 
The, when he created everything, he did not create anything like he created us. There is a love that he has for us that is so amazing that sometimes we miss the whole picture because we get so caught up in so many things going on in the world. We forget that God loved us so much that he created us with a plan for us, with a salvation story for us. And there is a hope that after the death, we have a hope as being a believer in Jesus Christ that we are going to spend eternity. I shouldn't say spend because eternity is not going to end, right? We are going to be in eternity with him as his sons and daughters. Of all of creation, we are family with God. You just can't miss that when you really think about God and how much he loved us when he created us. Man, I mean, it's just like, wow. I don't know how you feel about yourself. But the world may turn against you. You may be friendless. Maybe you have no friends. Maybe people just talk bad about you constantly because, you know, growing up in this world, but it's tough. It's brutal. If you don't fit into a certain crowd or you don't have your little clique around you, you could be an outcast real quick. Let me tell you something. The creator in heaven, he appointed you as his son and his daughter. If you just believe in him, you are you are a prince. You are a princess to the almighty king, the creator of everything. You are a prince or princess to the heavenly father. If no one else loves you, the creator of everything does. You say, well, that's not right. You know, I can't, I can't really hug that. I'm not cool with that. Why don't you get down on your knees and pray to your father and watch him change your world and you'll be cool with that. When he starts opening doors and things start happening, Right before your eyes, everything that you ask, he, he works for the good of you and the glory of him. Because the Bible says all things work together for good for those who love him. It is this predestination that we have to look at. Well, who's predestined then? We all are. Before God created us, it said, hey. Adam and Eve, they're going to mess up. All of humanity, I'm going to have to put the curse on them because they chose to go against, they chose to broke the law, which is totally death. The angels and Satan, who the angels that followed Satan, they have a penalty on them. They're going to die eternally. If you follow Satan, guess what's going to happen? You get the same punishment. But God says, I have a plan. So I'm going to create humans. Even though I know they're going to disobey me. But I'm going down there myself. And that penalty of death, I'm going to pay it. God can't die. So he made himself human. Talk about a miraculous, amazing, wonderful God. You can take yourself out of God and make yourself human? That's amazing. We can't even comprehend it. We can't get it. We can't understand it. And people say, well, since I don't understand it, it can't be possible. If your God is that small, then you have big problems. My God is much bigger than that. He can do exactly what he said. And he left his kingdom. To come here as one of us, as Jesus Christ, 100% human, for one mission, to die on that cross, defeat death, already planned out before the foundations of the earth. He already had the plan. He knew it was going to happen. He knew what he had to do, and he went and got it done. And he died on the cross. They placed him in a tomb. He raised from the dead before us. So that we no longer have to fear death. 
Let me tell you something. In him, we have redemption through his blood. It's because of being on that cross and shedding the blood. I know there's movie stars like I know Oprah Winfrey said it at one time. I'm tired of the story of blood. You, If you accept the blood of Jesus Christ, the death on that cross, the resurrection, you're going to love that blood. Because because of that blood, you get eternal life through him. You know what? If without the blood, we're doomed. Because there had to be a sacrifice. It is all holy God. Whenever you sin against God, all of humanity is cursed. Death has to take place. This is just the way it is. If you disagree with it, it doesn't matter. It's just the way it is. Isn't it funny people tell us how it is? Like, you can say what you want to, but the rules still apply. Here we have it. It's because of his blood that was shed. The forgiveness of your trespasses, every stinking sin that you've ever done. If you ask Jesus Christ, forgiven and never brought up again. I used to say they were forgotten. I used to say God would forget it. And then some kids used to ask me, God has a bad memory? (laughs) No, not that kind of forgetting. He just never brings them up again. Isn't that great? Because as kids, we know. You go get you go get in trouble. Sawyer's probably going to just, uh, I know. Go get in trouble, right? And you think, okay, I got in trouble for it. I'm good. I'm good. And then three years later, you get in trouble again. They go, I remember when you did that. Now you did it again. You, know, you really got to go back there, right? I mean, how many years ago was it? Yeah, yeah. Don't you wish mom and dad had a bad memory? And then, yeah. Hey, don't be laughing. It happened to you too, Brody. I know. Uh-huh. Yeah, mom has a good memory. She can go back to the day you were born. But isn't that amazing that God says, I'm not going to bring it up against you ever again. One person said to me, but I've killed people. I've killed a person. If you truly ask for forgiveness... It's as if you've never, ever sinned. Why? Because of the blood that was shed on that cross. You receive eternal life. See, but that's not fair. I mean, if you've taken somebody's life, you know what? The sin that takes you to hell, the disobedience to God, that sinful nature, that rebellion against God, it doesn't matter in what form it is. It all equals hell. If God's going to forgive you for sin, he's going to forgive you for all your sin. Yeah, it's a beautiful story. And it's because of the blood. It says, according to the riches of his grace, he has so much grace. We worry so much about, oh my goodness, did I say a cuss word today? Am I going to go to hell for it? Especially as kids. Oh my goodness, we're sin, 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 sin. Did I sin today? Am I going, you know what? If your heart is focused on following Jesus Christ, you are a Christian because you've asked for repentance. You're doing what the best from your heart to follow Christ. It's not about every little sin in your life because why? When you sin, you will say, wow, you know what? I shouldn't have did that. It doesn't mean you're going to hell. You just realize, hey, that was a bad mistake. I shouldn't have did that. Being a Christian doesn't mean that we're not going to sin. It means that when you sin, it's not like you're sitting there going, oh my goodness, I'm going to hell. Oh no, I'm doomed. No, as a Christian, we sit there and go, whoa, I used to would have did that. I don't know why I did that. You know what? I don't want to do that anymore. God, I'm sorry. And I messed up. You know what God does? He gets a lightning bolt out and he throws it. Boom, boom, boom. No, no, he doesn't. No, he didn't do that. You know, isn't that weird? We always think God's going to punish for every little. The reason I didn't get a raise was probably because of something bad I did. The reason um, um, I didn't get the promotion at work or um, my, well, the reason my family's all going through hard times or the reason, reason the church isn't going is probably because of uh, something I did, right? I mean, it, we can just keep going and going. That's not how God works. God loves you enough to die on the cross so that you don't have to worry about sin. You know what Christians get to worry about? 
We get to worry about reaching our family and our friends with the gospel of Jesus Christ so they can go to heaven to be with us and to be with Jesus. Because if I'm going to a place where I'm never going to face any pain, I'm not going to have any suffering, I'm going to be there for eternity, I'm going to be in heaven with Jesus, I'm going to see the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I'm going to be around with um, all these greatness and the goodness of our Father. I mean, this is amazing. Why would I want to go alone? I want my loved ones to go with me. (laughs) That's what we got to worry about, huh? Everybody in this church should be saved and be out there getting somebody else saved, leading them to Jesus. Not how many times, oh my goodness, I got, I got to walk so careful so I don't sin. You know what? If you're in love with Jesus, you don't want to sin. And if you do sin, you're going to ask for forgiveness, so you're still good. And I'll tell you what, if you flip somebody off while you're driving your car and you get in a car wreck and you die, if you're a Christian, before you flip them off, you're still going to heaven. Let me tell you that. We don't have to worry about every little thing because your heart is right with God. Should you have flipped them off? No. And if that person is a Christian, they meet you in heaven, they're going to say, what did you do that for? <laughs> Some people got it. <laughs> the truth is, I'm not saying to go sin. I'm just saying let's don't worry so much. If you're flipping people off every day, there's probably a problem. You might not be saved. You're not saved. <laughs> But Christians go around with so much guilt and we just got to let it go. And we got to live for Christ. Do not sin. Don't take, don't go out of here saying, oh man, I can sin all I want to. That's not the message. The message is you will not want to sin. But don't feel so guilty like God's up there with a lightning bolt or some kind of um, machine to increase pain in your life or something. That's not how it works. He died on that cross so you could have eternal life and also a fulfillment of life here. You can enjoy life. That's why it gives you peace and hope and joy and happiness. He made known to us the mystery of his will according to his kind intention which he purposed in him with a view to the administration suitable to the fullness of the times. That is, the summing up of all things in Christ, things in heaven, and things on earth in him. Also, we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to his purpose, who works all things according to the, after the counsel of his will. To the end, that we who were the first to hope in Christ, now the first to hope in Christ are the Believers right then when Jesus Christ went to heaven. So Paul and the apostles and the ones believing, those who were the first in Christ, would be to praise of his glory. In him, you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, you were sealed in him. Check this out. we, We just read right over this. When Paul is saying the first believers, they really get to praise God because they got to see Jesus They got to witness his death. They got to witness the resurrection. They got to witness all these miraculous things. Hands on, man. They were right there. And then you see that. And then this this next generation is from the people who've witnessed it. Now they're passing it on and saying, man, this is what we witnessed. This is what we saw. And here you go. You, It's like, well, well, we didn't get to see that. Well, it's through your hope and your faith and your trust in God and the miracles that he's going to do. But here's what happens. When somebody comes up to you and they say, hey, um, I want to buy your car. And I'm going to come tomorrow and I'm going to purchase it. Well, you have like 10 more people lined up to come look at your car today. But you feel good about this person. And they, they're honest. They're going to give you the right price. I mean, everything's good. Okay, you know what? I'll take your word for it. Go and I'll see you tomorrow. Is that the way we do it? No way. There is something that they need to leave, like a deposit or something that they won't get back if they if they renege on this deal, right? That's just the way it works. All right. I'll take this much money as a deposit. I'll see you tomorrow. If you don't come back tomorrow, this deposit's mine. Right? That way you know this person has a good intention of coming back. Check the story out. 
going, I'm going to start over on 13. In him, you also, having listening to the message of truth, you as maybe a non-believer, right? You listen to the story of truth, the message of truth, which is the gospel. You listen to it, and then you gave your life to Jesus Christ. So you said, yes, Lord. You repented of your sin. You asked him into your life. All is forgiven. Check this out. He says, in him, you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed. So that's that part where you find, you did, you believed. You were sealed at the moment that you believed in Jesus Christ. At the moment that you believed that he died on the cross, rose from the dead, and through him you can be saved and have eternal life. That's a salvation story. Once you believe that, he says, you were sealed in him. No one can take that away from you. But look what you were sealed with. It says, you're sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise. And look at this. Why? 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 Who is given as a pledge of our inheritance with a view to the redemption of God's own possession to the praise of of his glory. The reason the Holy Spirit is here is because Jesus has left and he says, I'm going back to the kingdom. And then at the appointed time, I'm coming back and I'm going to take my church. All the ones who believe, I'm going to take them up. They're going to spend eternity with me. But guess what? Just so you know that I haven't left you. You're not here alone. I'm giving you my Holy Spirit. I'm giving you a deposit. So whatever I, I come back, you know I'm coming back because you've had the Holy Spirit, my spirit, with you the entire time. It's a deposit so you can trust this. You know it's going to happen. I'm coming back and you and me are going to spend eternity together forever in the kingdom of God. And then it's not even done. I'm going to create a new heavens and a new earth, the new Jerusalem, and all of that you're going to get to experience and witness. And let me tell you what, here's my spirit to be with you here until I return. Isn't that amazing? Sometimes we read by this and we just say, oh yeah, Holy Spirit of promise, good. No, that's a down payment. That's a deposit, just saying it's all true. Now, and I'll end with this. If you have not experienced the Holy Spirit in your life, you don't even know you have a deposit. Man, when you just feel the presence of God in your life, that's the Holy Spirit. Whenever I talk to people out there and I, I, I give them the gospel message and I say, man, your knees are shaking, your hands are sweaty, your ch stomach hurts. It's because inside of you, there is the Holy Spirit speaking to you saying, we want a relationship with you so bad. And you're sitting there going, no, I don't. I, no, 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 this is weird. This is weird. And your hands start sweating and your stomach starts turning. Your knees start shaking. I mean, you're just like, uh, it's like a feeling you can't explain. It's because the Holy Spirit at work. And if, if you just realize that, go back to the day that you accepted Christ and remember that day that the Holy Spirit was calling you. That's the initial work of the Holy Spirit in your life is to call you from being a sinner into the presence of God as a believer. That's the initial work. After that work it says that his spirit comes within you. It's the spirit within you that begins to teach you how to live a life that is pleasing to God. That's the life that says don't flip people off. Don't say cuss words. Don't do that. It's not like you're going to help or don't. It's just it's not the good thing to do. And as a believer in Christ and having the Holy Spirit work in our life, wow, Jesus left that for us. That deposit. of a promise that he's coming again. That assurance, I will be back. I'm coming. What's he waiting on? I'll tell you what he's waiting on. I, my opinion of what he's waiting on. There is still people getting saved. And why would he come back now 
if your son or your daughter or your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your husband or your wife or um, someone in your family, what if they're going to get saved next week and he comes today? I truly believe God is patient in saying, I know you guys are going through a lot down there in this world, but there's still people going to get saved and I need to wait. I need to wait to give everyone the opportunity to spend in the kingdom. So while we're going through hard times here on earth, remember his spirit is with us. He's going to get us through the things we're going through. But be patient because if he comes today, think of how many of your relatives and your friends would not enter the kingdom. So thank you, God, for not coming back this second, right? Give my family time. Give more people time. I'm already sealed. That's what he said. You're already sealed. You got a guaranteed ticket to enter into the kingdom of God. You're good. The stress isn't on you. But we need to reach the lost and do the work of God. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, I just thank you for what you're doing. God, you just, your Holy Spirit, it's that part of you as the almighty God that when you as Christ left here to go to back to the, the heavenly places, God, you sent your Spirit here to be with us. God, why do we miss that? But God, Save our families. Man, if there's family members that we are around us, they should see the witness of you in our lives, God. And God, I pray right now that you just convict the people around us that are not saved, that you convict them, that they can't handle the motions anymore, that they have to see a glimpse of you. And they say, yes, I believe. God, there's people around us that if they would just say yes to you, they would be saved and their lives would be changed. God, maybe there's somebody here today. Maybe, maybe there's somebody in here that's maybe had, it's, you're speaking to them now. It's as simple as you said, believing. It's I repent of my sins. I believe that Jesus came to earth, died on the cross, rose from the dead, and through him, I can have eternal life, salvation, if we believe in the gospel and we turn to him as our strength and our direction, we are saved. God, help each person here to pray and ask you into their life. We pray all these things in your holy name. Amen.